All right, this video has the capacity to be very controversial or triggering to some, and so I just wanna warn you off the bat. Please take a deep breath, watch the full video through before you make a judgment call. And of course, leave your thoughts in the comments below because I love engaging on these subjects and nothing that I'm saying is intended to be cruel or hurtful or triggering. I just think it's one of those issues that requires a level of sensitivity and care and simultaneously probably is going to upset someone or a bunch of people no matter what. Now, language is very important. Language is the key, one of the primary tools that we use to create in this world. In fact, if we go back to ancient mysticism and spiritual teachings across the board, in so many traditions, they say that reality came about through the word of God, which is identified as the vibration of creation. But the Hermetica specifies and says in this beautiful vision that Hermes receives, that the mind of God produces the word of God, meaning the infinite totality, the source field, produces reality through the vibration of creation, just as in your own experience, your human thoughts give birth to speech. So speech and words and language is so very important. And if we are unclear about what words mean, and in that are speaking discordantly with each other, not understanding the true intention that we're attempting to convey, then society breaks down and we have anarchy. This is also expressed through the biblical story of the Tower of Babel, wherein God ends up confounding human speeches and gives everybody different languages and scatters people around the world. And as a result, people are not able to reach up to the spirit the way that they were trying to do before. There's a lot of discussion about what that story means. Was it a literal tower that was trying to be built? Is that a reflection or a metaphor for an ancient civilization? Some people have speculated that the Tower of Babel is the fall of Atlantis. But the point being, language is just so important. And when we're using words, we have to be clear on what they mean and making sure that we understand the meaning that we're ascribing to them, which is why I think etymology as well as modern definitions are so significant and important for us to be observing. So when we're talking then about where things are at today, the subject of specifically the pride movement, there is some reason to be concerned about it. And I don't mean that there's a problem with expressing yourself in the way that you want to express yourself. This is not an attack on people. This is a conviction about the language that we're using. Since time immemorial, pride has been identified as one of the seven deadly sins. It's also been identified as one of the biggest hurdles between moving from force into power. Of course, I'm referencing Dr. David Hawkins and his map of consciousness and his book, Power Versus Force, wherein he identifies essentially a map from zero to a thousand of a chart of where people can exist within the spectrum of human existence associated with different vibrational states of emotions and qualities of being. So lower quality states, states of force, as in states where you have to force things or people to do what you want in order to get what you want in life, are identified as things like fear, shame, guilt, grief, these kinds of things, apathy. Everything above the 200 line, 200 is courage, everything above that ends up being like love and reason and joy and enlightenment and willingness, willingness to participate in life, listen to the spirit and to raise your consciousness higher. Now it makes sense to me that people, humanity in general, are identified as being collectively right around the 200 mark. I think in Power Versus Force, which was written in the last maybe 20 or 30 years ago, I think, he said that humanity had just moved above the 200 line for the first time in history. And he's got a lot of details and information about how he calculated that, but the work is so profound that I tend to take it very seriously. It would make sense then that we're having this whole pride movement being that pride is the state of force directly under the 200 line. I think it resonates at 175. To move from pride into courage, into willingness and neutrality in these higher states, it does take a significant level of letting go of our attachments to being right. Of course, Dr. Hawkins was not identifying pride as in the movement, 
that exists today, he was talking about actually being prideful. So in order for us to explore this a little bit deeper, let's look at the etymology and the modern definition of pride, as well as what is explored in Power Versus Force about this nature. Okay, so the etymological root of the word pride is unreasonable self-esteem, especially as one of the seven deadly sins, haughtiness, overbearing treatment of others, pomp, love of display. There is, however, also this, in Middle English, sometimes also positive, proper pride, personal honor, good repute, exalted position, splendor, also prowess or spirit in an animal, used in reference to the erect penis from 15th century. That's interesting. On Merriam-Webster, it says, the quality or state of being proud, such as reasonable self-esteem, confidence and satisfaction in oneself, as well as pleasure that comes from relationship, association, achievement, or possession that is seen as a source of honor or respect. But then we also have the form of conceit, exaggerated self-esteem. Following that, we also now do have the modern experience that we're having with the LGBT movement, which is an event or series of events celebrating and affirming the rights, equality, and culture of LGBTQ people. Now in Power Versus Force, we find the following relative to the energy level of pride on the map of consciousness. Pride, which calibrates at 175, has enough energy to run the United States Marine Corps. It is the level aspired to by the majority of our kind today. People feel positive as they reach this level in contrast to the lower energy fields. This rise in self-esteem is a balm to all the pain experienced at lower levels of consciousness. Pride looks good and knows it. It struts its stuff in the parade of life. Pride is at a far enough removal from shame, guilt, or fear that to rise, for instance, out of the despair of the ghetto to the pride of being a Marine is an enormous jump. Pride as such generally has a good reputation and is socially encouraged, yet as we see from the chart of the levels of consciousness, it is sufficiently negative to remain below the critical level of 200. This is why pride feels good only in contrast to the lower levels. The problem, as we all know, is that pride goeth before a fall. Pride is defensive and vulnerable because it is dependent upon external conditions, without which it can suddenly revert to a lower level. The inflated ego is vulnerable to attack. Pride remains weak because it can be knocked off its pedestal back into shame. The downside of pride, therefore, is arrogance and denial. These characteristics block growth. In pride, recovery from addictions is impossible because emotional problems or character defects are denied. The whole problem of denial is one of pride. Thus, pride is a very sizable block to the acquisition of real power, which displaces pride with true stature and prestige. What can we take from all of this? As we've looked at, there is something to be said about positive pride probably associated similarly with Saiyan pride. Damn it, where is your Saiyan pride? But the thing is, we need to be really careful because it seems like a double-edged sword. We don't want to get ourselves caught up in being overly excited about ourselves and expressing ourselves that we lose our base of humility. Now that's to say it's not bad to be proud of someone you love for doing something great or even proud of yourself in moments of accomplishment. We just don't want to dwell there knowing that there is such a great ladder to climb in the journey of life. There is so much for us to learn that if we become stuck in the expression of our own display, we might fail to rise to an even greater level of inner enlightenment and attunement with the soul's light. If you're going to use that term, be very careful with how you use it. And it might also be wise for us to collectively find a better definition that fits what it is that we're trying to say. Because at the end of the day, we are all in this together. Humanity is a big, beautiful, unified species because we're all interconnected and one arising in spirit from the source field. I know that might be a little bit more esoteric than it needed to be said, but we create division 
through the ideas that we hold in our mind and the language that we use and how we're communicating with each other and how we're showing up in the world. But just in the same way, we can also create unity by recognizing the inherent love and qualities that exist between us all. So be mindful. Don't be overly prideful in a negative way. Be humble in everything that you do and show up in a way that is meaningful in a way that is serviceful. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.